friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing. We are in chapter five talking about the test management and today we'll be looking forward to complete this chapter with the last topic called as 5.6 test reports and we'll try understanding what kind of generic reports are created as a part of our testing lifecycle. To talk about the test reports, uh, we generally wonder that what kind of reporting are done as a part of our testing lifecycle. And generally, there are multiple things which different organization creates. And at any point of time, when you're working with different organization, you would realize that there are multiple reports which a testing team can create and share with their specific set of stakeholders like to the developers or to the management or to the release management or to the project management and whatsoever, right? And you could also look forward to have a lot of internal reports where you will be reporting to your test lead or your test manager that what you have been doing for a particular duration of time. But these are something which are internally created and not called as a standard report, which is created as a part of the testing life cycle. Now, most important thing here to understand is that what are these standard reports first of all? So we have two standard reports which are generally created as a part of the testing life cycle, which are interest of different stakeholders, including your customer as well. Now, these two reports are called as test progress reports and test summary report. Now, test progress report and test summary report both have similar information, what is written here on the slide, but they are created at a different interval of time. That means during the entire software testing life cycle, right from the test planning till the test closure, test progress report will be created multiple times at multiple milestones. That means at several milestones, like once uh, the test execution kicks off, or maybe when you talk about different levels being completed, or even if you have a time, uh, scale for example you're following agile you're talking about sprints so each sprint completion could be a milestone for you so you can populate a test progress report and share all these information like what is the summary of testing performed in that sprint information on what occurred during the test period for example a summarization of uh, you have executed 20 test cases out of that 15 have passed five have failed or maybe you executed 30 test cases in which two got blocked due to environment issues or test data related uh, you know, conclusions and a lot many other things. Deviations from the plan, if any, if you have got any kind of deviation due to unavailability of requirement or clarity or sign off from the business on certain uh, validation rules or acceptance criteria, right? So all that deviations can also be included there. Status of testing as of then, that is during the first sprint, what is your status so far? How much these 20 or 30 test cases contribute to the overall progress? What kind of input or how much uh, measures it has done? What kind of critical defects have you found? Uh, you can put together all those definitions or status uh, of overall testing performed is as a part of one sprint, right? Uh, the factors that have blocked or continue to block, that means if there are any blockers, and uh, if they were resolved, that's you can update it. But if you have continued to be blocked by those blockers, highlight them in your test progress report. The metrics of different parameters, like where are you on the defects, how many defects are open, how many defects are critical, how many defects are opened uh, in terms of like deferred, which cannot be resolved right now. What are your execution statistics, like how many tests were executed, how many are pending, how many are skipped, why all the reasons for that how these test cases are covering your requirements how much coverage has been achieved so far do you think there's a need to add any extra work or extra test cases to complete them right and exactly the resource consumption in terms of like how exactly your test data is being uh, utilized as a part of the environment and a lot many other things which you think you have performed as a part of your that particular cycle or milestone also talking about from the factor of risk, if in case you're following risk-based testing as an approach, then how your risk is getting mitigated through every single execution and what are the status on the residual risk, the risk which are remaining to be mitigated and reusable test work products produced during that particular timeline. 
right? So test progress report, in short, it is also called as TPR, which is created at different milestones throughout the life cycle. It's not a one-time report. It'll be created at multiple times, through at multiple milestones, and having all these informations to be shared. Now, on the other hand, when you talk about the test summary report, it is created once for all at the end of the entire project, or maybe at the end of the release, if your project has multiple releases, right? So once at the end of the release, you will be creating a test summary report, which will be exactly having the same information, but the duration will be different. For example, if you say in your agile project, you have uh, two releases, two major releases uh, for an year, then each release consists of seven to eight sprints, then every single sprint you will be creating a TPR, test progress report, and at the end of each release, you will create a test summary report, which will talk the summary of seven to eight sprints put together, right? So the information pretty much remains the same, but the duration will be different when considering these two reports. Now, what are the other non-standard reports which you can find in your organization? For example, there could be some very, very internal reports like a test manager asking you to submit your daily timesheets that what kind of work you have performed today, what kind of stories you have tested, what executions you made at an individual level. So say for example, a team consists of three to four testers, then all four testers need to create a daily report and send to the manager. Now, second thing could be more about uh, the things which are pending on the development side. What kind of clarity do we need? What kind of blockers we have? What kind of defects are taking longer to get resolved? What kind of deviations do we have? What kind of executions are being blocked, right? What kind of help and support do you need from a development or architecture team, right? So put together, you can internally have some more defects, uh, some more reports like this, or you can even talk about the test logs that during the execution, this is what happened. And uh, when we executed, uh, 90% test passed and 10% failed, all the 10 failed has a report related to it. So establishing the traceability relationship between every single item could be also a small log or a report which you can populate, right? Defect report is another thing which you talk about. So whenever you log a defect, you just don't call it as defect information, you call it as a defect report. And that's also one of the report. Sometimes people specifically ask you that at any point of time, randomly, right? That, hey, where are we on the test coverage right now? Where are we on the requirement coverage right now? How many test cases have been executed in different environments, right? You may have dev environment, QA environment, SIT, UAT. So you might have written 200 test cases. Now all these 200 test cases have been executed in all the environments. So we want a report on that. Now these are some casual reports which are populated, which are created as a part of your day-to-day -day work, but not necessary that every organization you will find them, right? But it is still important to know because you might be working in an organization where these kind of reports are also created. So anything which can be asked to you about your day-to-day -day work and being put in a format which can be presented to a set of stakeholders internally, externally, is called as a report. But standardizing it, we just have two reports that is test progress report and test summary report. I hope you had a good understanding on what exactly reporting is all about when it comes to testing. And we'll be talking more about this in our different sessions. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.